Avengers Endgame has come and gone, and I still haven't talked about like half of these MCU films. So we're back. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep on talking about them. Yay! I hate myself. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zack Snyder. If you're new around here on Yen, we pull from every corner of nerd culture to talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. Months ago, years even, it feels like years at this point, I took on the Herculean task to rewatch and review all of the MCU. I started doing that uh, to get prepared for Endgame, and then I got behind. I watched all of the movies. I saw Endgame in theaters. I really enjoyed it. I just didn't get around to watching all of them because there's too dang many. So we're back. If you missed any of the last episodes, go check them out. They're down in the description box below. Hopefully I can get caught up before we have five more MCU movies in theaters because superhero fatigue is killing me. But with that being said, let's take a look at the next film on the docket and that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It's just swords were your thing and guns were mine, but I guess we were both doing guns now. I just didn't know that. Well, that's intense. Okay, so if you don't know anything about it, let's get through this right quick. The MCU started in 2008 with Iron Man and went through phase one where we saw the Avengers for the first time. Phase two made things crazy with the inclusion of the Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant-Man. Everything led up to Civil War in 2016. We now have Black Panther and Spider-Man. And now we're starting the year of 2017 with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, directed once again by James Gunn. I love this film. While the first Guardians film had some really big positives, like a solid cast, great comedy, and the full introduction of Thanos, it also had some big negatives, like Ronan the Accuser being a bad villain, Thanos not really being that prevalent, and because we had to be introduced to so many new characters and places and concepts in the MCU, there's a lot of exposition that just feels very unnatural in that Guardians 1 script. Well, fortunately, Guardians 2 comes in and completely knocks things out of the water. We have Baby Groot now, who's super epic and I love him. Drax continues to be one of the funniest characters in the MCU, especially with the dynamic with the new character, Mantis. Rocket Raccoon continues to be a mood. In fact, I think Rocket actually is my favorite Guardians character now, but I'll talk about that more when we get to Infinity War. And this is the last film that I actually liked Peter Quill in because for some reason his character in Infinity War and Endgame is just not that good. But again, we'll, we'll get into that at some point. He's good here. The main plot surrounding Guardians 2 has to do with Peter Quill's father, Ego. Not knowing him for most of his life, Quill finds out that his father isn't particularly a great person. In fact, he is the sole reason that his mother died. There's something strange about Phase 3 because somehow Marvel finally figured out how to make some really good villains. I mean, Zemo was okay in Civil War, and I liked Dormammu and Doctor Strange, even if I really didn't like Carcilius, but it's Ego that was the very first villain in the MCU that I actually really, really liked. Ego is easily one of the coolest character concepts in general in the MCU at this point, because he is a living planet with the humanoid presence of Kurt Russell. Well, the living planet part is cool, not the Kurt Russell part. I don't really know if Kurt Russell is a well-loved actor or not. Anyways, he shows Peter Quill that he also has similar abilities and he wants him to join forces with his father to take over the universe. And obviously Quill is one of the good guys. He's very hurt that his father would kill his mother, so he goes against his father's wishes. This ego stuff is genuinely great. I love the dynamic between father and son. I especially love the final battle. Everything to do with the main plot in this film is fantastic. My only real issue with Guardians 2 is that this film, much like a lot of MCU films is that it does try to do a bit too much. There's this entire subplot where Yondu, Quill's kidnapper, adoptive father, I don't know what you call him, but Yondu has been exiled from his group, the Ravengers. He's not as loyal to them because of something to do with Quill. And honestly, most of the subplot is just not as interesting to me as everything else in the film. I will say though, that it is tied to the main plot pretty well, considering he grows to learn just how good Yondu has been to him over the years and we get some really good character moments between these two. With Yondu actually sacrificing himself to save Quill, we get a really beautifully orchestrated funeral scene, which is not only a heartwarming moment in both of the Guardians films, but one of the best moments in the MCU. 
I guess where I'm at, I just don't really like the Ravenger scenes a whole lot. Yondu and Quill though, pretty amazing. The visuals are freaking amazing. The soundtrack, again, just like the first movie. If you like 80s music, it's gonna be good here. The thing that I do enjoy about this film the most though is its comedy. That's what Guardians 1 done well and it continues to do it well here. I'm not gonna say it's the best because there are some moments where things are just not funny. There's this dude named Taserface and they go on about how funny his name is for way too long. Then there's another scene where Groot is asked to go get a certain item and then he comes back with something different and then he goes back and he gets another item and they just do this for again way too long causing it to not be funny on a rewatch. I know some people don't like the Guardians comedy in Infinity War as much as I do uh, for this very reason but uh, some of these scenes they just drag a little bit too long. Other than that though I, I feel like the, the comedy is super solid. As much as I'm not the biggest fan of what they've done with the character arcs within Infinity Infinity War and Endgame, I can say that I do appreciate a lot of the character development that happens in this film particularly. Sure, they've got their tropes, but James Gunn does a pretty great job of making these characters fun to watch. We do see Gamora and Nebula grow a bit more. Their relationship is grossly underrated. And like I said earlier, Rocket, <laughs> the, the stupid raccoon, ends up having moments that end up making him one of my favorite characters throughout the entire MCU. As I get through these phase three movies in a post in game world, I'm not super excited for the future of the MCU. A large part of that is I just want more out of the films that I watch and that's just, they're superhero movies, like that just is what it is. But I will say that I am looking forward to more Guardians of the Galaxy films. I was super disappointed when I heard that James Gunn was fired from Disney and that they weren't gonna use him for Guardians 3. So now knowing that he is back on board is a relief. He's one of the very few directors in these Marvel movies that brings a certain charm to the franchise and knowing that he's the main creative source behind them as the director and writer instead of having a ton of screenwriters behind them, it really does solidify these characters as some of the best in the MCU. At the end of the day, Guardians 2 is still a fun time on a rewatch. I still think it's a bit too long at times. There's some stuff I still don't 100% care for, but it's leagues above the first film in almost every way. If you're looking for an entertaining superhero space movie that you don't have to watch a whole bunch of other films to set the stage for, Guardians 2 is perfect for that. And if you are rewatching the MCU for Endgame, it's still a great watch, especially to see these characters grow throughout this movie into an Infinity War and then into Endgame. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Every Dinner is brought to you by Humble Bundle Choice. Humble Bundle Monthly recently rebranded themselves to Humble Bundle Choice, and with that comes a couple of differences. The main difference is instead of getting a surprise amount of games every single month, now you get to see what those games are before you even subscribe to it, and you get to pick and choose which ones you want. You also get 10% off on the Humble Bundle store, as well as all the games in the Humble Bundle trove. There's a lot of different perks on Humble Bundle. I really like using them every single month. There's always some really cool, interesting indie games over there, along with some bigger games that you get surprised that you can get for cheaper than $20, sometimes even cheaper than $10. So go check out Humble Bundle Choice. You can use the link in the description. And in doing so, you'll be supporting your everyday nerd. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Are, movie, are Marvel movies still hip and popular with the kids? Or since Endgame is over, is are they all not worth talking about anymore? I don't know. I know Black Widow's coming out soon. Who's excited for that? I'm not. So let me know, do you like Guardians 2? Do you hate it? All that kind of stuff in the comments. Like, dislike, subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time.